Hey guys, Dan at Warpaint JKU. So it's time to swap your vehicle to tons. Check out this two part video series if you want to know everything in one solid place and everything that they don't tell you when it comes time to ton swap. Check it out. First part about this video is going to be axle selection. What axle do you choose from? When I did my research, I found that the best axle to use was either a 2005 to a 2016 Super Duty Dana 60, and that out of a Super Duty F250 or F350. But there's a little asterisk there. If you get it out of an F350, there is the ability or the chance that it might be a vehicle that had dual rear wheels. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it came from a vehicle that had single rear wheels. Otherwise, you're not gonna have the right hub set up on the front. You can swap them out and make it work, but it's just added cost, there's no reason. If you go to any of the websites and you check out what the parts are, are sold for, you're gonna see that they list them as swap trust kits for a 2005 and up. And that works. And if you were to buy that swap trust kit for a 2005 and up, including something newer than a 2016, it would fit. The problem becomes if you get something newer than a 2016 with finding gears. In 2017 and up, the according to Dana, the pinion design of the axle changed just slightly. And it was changed enough to where the older gears will not fit in that housing. So while the housing looks identical, the gear set is slightly different. And because of that, no one makes gears deeper than a 488 for your Jeep. So if you're gonna find a Super Duty Dana 60, 2005 to 2016 is the axle that you want. It's tempting to maybe throw a 2004 in there or older, and it would work, but there are some weaknesses when you go down to a pre-2005 axle that they, that they corrected and upgraded in 2005. Let's check out some of the changes. Now, in 2005, they made the outer axle shaft, the part that connects here with your U-joint and goes out and connects to the wheel bearing. They made that a 35 spline outer shaft. Uh, Pre-2005, it was only a 30 spline, so that outer shaft was a lot weaker. Now, the inner shaft is gonna be a 35 spline anyway, but the outer shaft is what would only be a 30 spline. If you go to a 2005 or 2016, anywhere in between, you're gonna have 35 spline inners and outers, which is a big upgrade in strength. The other thing that they changed is the hub bearing assembly. Let's talk about gears and lockers. Now, this part is gonna be quick. I know when you think about gears and you think about lockers, there's a lot that goes into it, especially if you're gonna re-gear them yourself like I did. And they're an important part of any off-road build. But that's a whole separate video. But you gotta choose the right gears for your vehicle. Again, a whole nother episode, a whole nother, nother video. When it comes to lockers, you're gonna need a selectable locker for your vehicle. Now. I would not do an auto locker if you're gonna spend the time and you're gonna put the money into the vehicle and you're gonna build it on one tons, definitely buy a selectable locker. For the Data 60, they make electric lockers similar to that of like a factory Dana 44, you know, Rubicon, or they make air lockers. In this particular rig, I am running an air locker. It works flawlessly. I have no air leaks. Everything has been perfectly fine. Um, I didn't want to necessarily deal with the added cost, but here's a hint at the next video. When you do your rear axle, depending upon the axle you choose, some of them e-lockers are not an option. So I was going to have to buy the air compressor anyway. So I bought an air compressor, bought my air lockers. Like I said, re-geared it myself. Away I went. Selecting the right gears is definitely another reason why you're going to want to make sure that you have the right year axle. Because if you get an, a Super Duty axle that's too new, you're not going to be able to get a gear set that's going to make your Jeep run happy. Let's move on to the next part of this video series, the Swap Trust Kit. Everything that's going to make your vehicle bolt onto a Super Duty axle set. Let's check out the one I use. 
All right, so here's the Super Duty Dana 60 that I have underneath my rig and the swap truss kit that I used, if you can see it right back there, is gonna be from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. Now, Barnes Four Wheel Drive makes good stuff. They've been making it for a very long time. They're a smaller company in America. There are other companies out there um, the reason I went with Barnes was simply because lots of other people did before me. Lots of other people had good luck with Barnes and I wanted to try something different. I had a lot of experience with Artec Industries, which also makes great stuff, but I just wanted to try something different. So I went with a swap trust kit from Barnes. Now, here's the thing with the swap trust kit. A Dana 60 is a very big axle. It has very big, very thick axle tubes. It does not need a truss for strength. The reason you run a truss on your Dana 60 is so that it bolts up to the factory suspension components of your vehicle. It puts the springs where they need to go and it puts your control arms where they need to go, your uppers and lowers. The thing I liked about Barnes is Barnes offered a three link truss swap kit and then you had to buy the links separately. And it was a DIY kit, you could build it all yourself, you could measure everything out, but it came with the brackets, the tubing, the ends, came with everything. So I wound up converting mine to a three link long arm in the front and rear as I built the vehicle. Now, the swap truss kit, um, there were some issues that I had with mine. I would imagine if you were to buy another one from Barnes that you probably would not have those issues. I think they were honestly machining mistakes. Um, everything went on very nicely. Everything went on very smoothly. The quality is there. The material thickness is there. The steel was very nice. It was all shipped and packaged very well. The problem though that I had in a couple of instances with my shock mounts as well as with my upper control arm mount, because again, there's only one, it's a three link, the bolt holes weren't big enough for the bolts. So I used the bolts that they sent me that they supplied in the kit. Uh, they were the right bolts because I slid them through the shock without it being in the bracket and I slid it through the end link that they had sent me for the upper control arm. And they were definitely the right bolts. They weren't too big, they weren't too small. They were just right. Um, but the holes in the brackets were not big enough. And I didn't think to test them before I welded it to the axle. And once I did, I didn't have the clearance to get in there with a drill. So here I was with a Dremel sitting under the Jeep, dremeling out the bolt holes so that they were actually big enough for the bolts to pass through. Again, it's a silly mistake. Um, everyone's made mistakes. I'm not gonna necessarily fault Barnes with that. Um, and I would imagine if you were to buy their, their kit from them today, you probably would not have that issue. I was probably one of the only people that ever did. Uh, lucky me. But anyway, guys, um, that's why I went with Barnes. Now, there are some other things that come with that swap truss kit from Barnes that I would absolutely 150% never use on my Jeep. We're going to talk about those in just a second. But before we get into that stuff, let's talk about the next section, brakes. So when it comes to brakes on a Super Duty Dana 60, you can just run the factory brakes. I do recommend getting new rotors. I do recommend getting new calipers. They're not expensive. Mine are both from Power Stop. Um, but they are absolutely enormous brakes. Now, in order to get those enormous brakes to function, uh, because obviously this brake caliper you can see has two pistons in it. It has one up here and it has one down here. That's a giant upgrade from your factory JK brakes. So you need to do something under the hood to make that work. Let's check it out. So here we are under the hood of my 2015 JK and this brake master cylinder and this brake booster are not the factory original brake parts that were in this vehicle. Because the brakes are so much larger and because they, they, stop, they stop this vehicle amazingly well, even with the added weight of the axles and the added weight of the tires plus bead locks, the the brake booster does not create the pressure that is needed to function, to have those brakes function correctly. And the, the master cylinder underneath it, there's a piston down here, there's a bore size, and the, the bore size on that piston that pushes that fluid is just simply not large enough. So to put it simply, guys, here's the deal. There's a lot of information out there on the internet, stuff that talks about how in the 2013 and up JKs when they went to the 3.6, they upgraded the brake master cylinder and the booster. I'm assuming they did because lots of people talk about it. 
but I will tell you that the factory brake booster and master cylinders does not put out anywhere near enough brake fluid with enough pressure to have those brakes function correctly and safely. So what I did was I put in the J8 brake booster and master cylinder kit. Now the J8 kit is a military grade brake booster and master cylinder. Um, it comes, it, it's sometimes hard to get your hands on one. So if you're thinking about doing this swap, there's no way around it, you're gonna need it. So if it's available now, even if you're doing the swap six months from now, go out, buy yourself the J8 brake booster and brake master cylinder because there's no workaround. I found that there's bigger master cylinders for the, for the stock JK, but they leak, They're, they just have horrible reviews. This really truly is the only way to get that stock brake pedal feel back even with 40 inch tires. And guys, I'm even gonna say that it stops better than it did factory with factory sized tires on it. This Jeep stops on a dime. It is absolutely amazing. You're definitely gonna wanna get that brake upgrade. So order it when it's available if you know you're gonna do this swap. All right guys, only two sections left out of this video. I'm trying to make it quick as possible, but here's the next section, wheels. You're gonna need different wheels for your axles. They're eight lug axles. You're gonna need a certain size to make sure they clear the giant brakes. You're also gonna need the right offset to make sure everything clears your steering, which is coming up in just a second. But anyway, let's talk about There's wheels. There's lots of manufacturers that are gonna make wheels that are gonna work with a Super Duty axle. If you're putting them on a Jeep, you're gonna be running big tires. You're probably gonna want a beadlock. Think about the tire size that you're gonna run first. 17s will fit and clear the factory brakes on a JK with a Super Duty brake assembly on it. Now, the 17 inch wheel, which is what I have here, this particular wheel is made by Raceline. This is the Raceline Monster. I've worked with Raceline for a long time, but I've had Raceline wheels long before I ever worked with Raceline. They are simply made to a racing standard, which is a lot higher than a DOT standard. They are super strong, they are super durable, and they will last you longer than the vehicle, more than likely. Um, they also have great quality and, and customer service. So uh, just, just an all around awesome company. But anyway, now the eight lug wheel that you are gonna wanna get is an eight by 170 bolt pattern. Now, again, little teaser about the next part of this uh, video series, part two, the rear axle is not that same bolt pattern, but we're gonna switch it to make it work. We'll talk about that later. Now, here's the deal. With the Jeep uh, and the 8x170 with that Ford Super Duty axle under there, obviously it's an 8 lug, so your 5 lug wheel is not going to work. Um, you make sure you get it, get it on an 8x170. I personally ran a 17 because there's a ton of 40 inch tires available with a 17 inch rim. If you're going to go with something like a 42 or a 43, you're probably not watching this video. And if you are watching this video, there's not a ton of wheels available on a 17 inch that are in that tire size. So um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you get the right wheel for the tire size that you're gonna wanna run. Now, with 40s and a 17, like I said, there's a bunch of different tire manufacturers out there that make that size tire. And as far as backspacing is concerned, I ran a 3.75 backspace. Let's go, let me go show you what a backspace exactly is. All right guys, here we are with my spare tire. Now, this is the front. Obviously, you can see the bore hole in there is very large. That's for your locking hub to fit through. We have the eight bolts around it or the eight holes for your, for your lugs. But backspacing is something completely different. Backspacing is just very simply going to be the distance from the mounting surface that mounts up against your hub to the inside section or part of your wheel. The distance here, if you're able to, to put a straight edge right across this and then measure it down, that's, that's an easy way to do it if you're not sure what your backspacing is. Mine are 3.75 inches. So that moves the wheel out far enough to where you still have a nice drive quality, but it also allows the inside sidewall of your tire to clear all your steering components, which we're going to talk about next. All right, guys, let's talk about steering. Now, you can have your JK power steering box work just fine. There's a lot of talk about out there about PSC steering boxes and how they're bigger and stronger and all that kind of stuff, and they are. Um, I personally, it works for me, that's what I would recommend, is just to, to use a factory JK steering box. Now, 
The factory JK steering box has a weak point. It's called the sector shaft. That sector, sector shaft comes out and turns and in turn actually rotates the pitman arm. With okay, so the sector shaft is actually gonna be right back here. This nut is actually threaded onto the bottom of your sector shaft. When people don't have a hydraulic ram and they try to force their steering off-road, they actually break this sector shaft. But as soon as you have a hydraulic ram, hydraulic pressure is fed through these lines down to a ram, and that ram actually pushes and pulls on the steering to control it better. It takes all the stress off of this sector shaft up here, and it makes it last a lot longer. Now, I'm not saying that a PSC sector shaft would not be bigger, that it's not stronger, that the box isn't more heavy duty. It is. The purpose of this video is just to talk about the details of my build and what I did and what works for me. Now, I mentioned before that there were a couple of parts that I would not use that are included in the Barnes kit. And one of those is your track bar relocation bracket. Now, your track bar, because the diff is so much farther over to the driver's side on a Super Duty, the track bar, actually, if it was in the factory position, it would be an inch and three quarter back from where it is now toward the back of the vehicle. And you would absolutely come down and hit the diff when compressing your suspension. So what Barnes attempted to do and what some other companies have, have done better is they've actually designed a new track bar bracket, which relocates it an inch and three quarter for, farther forward. And it just comes down and just misses the front of the diff cover here and allows you to get the suspension articulation. Now, I originally put the Barnes track bar relocation bracket on my Jeep. It did not work. When I turned my steering wheel, my Pitman arm actually hit the relocation bracket and I had hardly any left turn steering and hardly any driver. So what I wound up doing was cutting it off, welding on a new track bar relocation bracket from RPM steering and that solved all the problems. I have full steering left, full steering right now. The track bar, like I said, misses the diff when you're compressing your suspension. It solved that problem. That's what I would recommend. That's what I use. That's what I did. It works perfectly. Now, obviously, you're going to need to connect your factory tie rod as well as your drag link, right, from your, from your pitman arm down to your steering knuckle on that side, and then your, your tie rod from the steering knuckle and then all the way over to your steering knuckle on this side. Again, Barnes has a bracket, okay, and it's been put in some other YouTube videos that are pretty popular, but they changed the design after some of those videos were made. Barnes' new video, if you look, this kit actually has an inner hole and an outer hole, and it has the same thing over there. It has an inner hole, if you can see it, and then it, where the drag link is attached, and then an outer hole, now again, the Barnes four-wheel drive kit, when I called them, they said that their kit was a generic kit, not specifically meant for Jeeps. The problem with a generic kit is that it actually mounted the, their recommendation, okay, was to mount the drag link farther in front of the tie rod, which would vastly reduce your steering. It would make it awful. So what I did was I found another company, TMR Customs, TMR Customs, and there are others out there as well, but I use TMR Customs. They make a track bar, I'm sorry, they make a bracket that welds on to your factory steering knuckles on the Super Duty axle, and it basically is kind of similar to the same design that Barnes originally had and then changed. And it allows you to move your tie rod bar on the outermost hole to get it farther away from the axle and then to put your drag link behind it a little bit closer to the axle. That's why on the passenger side where that stuff attaches, there were the two holes that actually had something installed. And on the driver side, which I showed you a second ago, that, that innermost hole was actually empty. Barnes did not do it that way. When they changed it, all they have is the innermost hole. And you're supposed to use the innermost hole for your tie rod and then use the outermost hole, which again, because the passenger side actually has two holes, you're supposed to use that on for your drag link and, and your steering is just awful if you do that. So um, TMR Customs did it right. Uh, there's other companies, like I said, out there that will also do it, but I use the TMR Customs high steer weld on arms. They are plenty strong, they're welded inside and out, they're very large, they're very big uh, and everything works fine. Only other thing left to talk about, and this is very simple, is your hydraulic ram. 
Again, PSC makes an awesome hydraulic ram kit. I personally used a company called West Texas Off-Road. They make a ram called the Redneck Ram. It's very popular. It's a little bit less expensive. I bought their ram and I bought a rebuilt steering box from them, which was a factory rebuilt box already drilled and tapped for the lines. Came with the ram, came with the lines, came with the fittings. It came with everything to install it. You just have to make sure you measure it correctly. Stick around, guys. Look out for part two, which is going to talk about the rear axle. A lot less to talk about because there's no, there's, no, uh, there's no steering or any of that kind of stuff. But in that video, I'm also going to mention where I put these axles. How far of a stretch did I give it in the rear? How far did I move the front axle forward in the front? This video was long enough. I don't need to make it any longer. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions or anything that I forgot to mention, shoot me a message, email me. Check out my Instagram at WarPaintJKU. Uh, you can check out my website, right, WarPaintJKU.com. You can email me there. Uh, lots of ways to get in contact with me. I will absolutely answer your questions. Anyway, guys, go build your Jeep.